beluga whales are a part of our ecology, and I know that we respect this as much as the other Cook Inlet stakeholders in this organization do. There is a federal process in place that will protect the whales, but the process will also let projects move forward, no doubt with additional responsibilities, but Alaska will just continue to shine as a place where we get things done right, development and conversation, or conservation can coexist. <coughs> the health of our transportation system is probably more important in Alaska than any other state in the nation. <coughs> as long as we continue to heavily rely on marine transportation and navigation through Alaska's waters to deliver goods and move people around, we have to continue to focus on keeping our infrastructure and our shipping lanes open. Thank you very much for the, allowing me to come here this morning, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all down at the port this summer. Thank you. We've got uh, time for questions, Governor, if you're willing to take a few. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. You can stay up here or sit down, okay. whatever's comfortable. Yes. If there were to be a bridge, uh, the access to the bridge from the Anchorage side, uh, as the planning is now, would go uh, behind the port. It would, uh, it would come up. Uh, Government Hill is right in here, and, and and so the road that come around from, let's say the bridge is just north of Karen's Point, right here is Karen's Point, right about here. So it would the road would come around and come along back of the port on our new ground that we've just completed, and right here would kind of climb up behind our railroad tracks, come across here, and go on up to Government Hill, and out that way. That's 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 the, the the chosen route at the present time. The other route that was looked at, which in, in effect would be better, in some ways, would come off the bridge and go across the back of Elmendorf Air Force Base, and then tie into Boniface and come in at that point. There's a lot more traffic out there, and you get your trucks and uh, your your people going north. And they can go south the other way. So it, uh, that would actually be better. But Elmendorf uh, has a problem with that because of the elephant cage antenna system, which sits right up in here, uh, up here with the brown bears and the black, <laughs> black bears. Right up there. <laughs> and uh, we actually have, we actually have a, a grizzly and two cubs and a black bear that hang out up there. And because uh, we have a lookout station up here manned by APU students. Uh, as uh, watching for whales, we don't. We we shut down our operation of construction and putting in sheep piles when the blue whales come into our zone, and 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 then we we start construction again when they when they leave. The contractor ties it tries to time it to their breaks and their lunch hours so we don't lose too much time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that's the plan as it is now. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Included in your plans, uh, I didn't see anything with respect to the uh, ferry port or the ferry dock that uh, you go across the way to the Matsu. Uh, the, uh, I think I've spent uh, more executive time on that ferry landing than anything else. Uh, we, we tried to put it at the port. But every time we get close to a, a spot that it would work for us and work work for the Matsu people, uh, the ferry would require uh, more room for 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 for, for maneuverability than, than we could allow because of our Coast Guard regulations and ships come in and out all the time, and so they always uh, the Coast Guard's been against it for a long time at the, the various locations. Uh, 
The ferry needs about 800 feet of space in front of it to maneuver, uh, particularly, well, uh, year-round, and particularly, though, in the wintertime with ice. So we've not been able to find a spot for it at the port because if we put it down with it, about the only place we could on the, on the south end, the, our navigation channels or navigation lines right here for a dredging and our big ships coming in, our tankers coming in for the fuel docks and cement ships, we don't have room for the ferry to maneuver and allow the ships to come in at the same time. So it's never worked. So the ferry uh, people are trying to get it over at Ship Creek. Ship Creek being right over here, right off this map on the right side. And um, I don't think there will be a resolution on that for some time. Uh, there was a question back here. Yes. Okay. Yes, you mentioned that 50% of the funding was federal. I'm just curious if that was stimulus funds or other federal funds. Uh, well, it's all money. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how we get it. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, we don't have any stimulus funds. We. Uh, The only way the stimulus funds have been dealt out so far is, is if you're in a if you're in a if you're a road or a high a highway or, or a rail or a transit, and uh, and because that's it's a formula funding. But there is a pot of money, 1.5 billion dollars. It was 5.6 billion once, and then at, at the night before this the Congress was over, why it got cut to 1.5 billion, and the secretary of transportation does have discretionary powers over those dollars and ports, by golly, is mentioned in, the, in, the, in that language that they do qualify. So we're hopeful that we will uh, uh, get some stimulus funds out of that pot. But we won't know that until probably uh, late in the year, probably closer to October, November. The, the criteria will be out a couple of weeks, and then we'll, everybody in the world will file for grants, including the formula people that already got money, highways and rail and transit and so on and so forth. So it'll be a grab bag. Uh, we're hopeful, uh, and there are signs that he understands uh, the value of ports. And uh, you know, the problem with ports is that normally you don't you don't drive by the port of Anchorage every day to go to work. You don't. You like you go to the airport. You don't go to the port to catch a plane. And so, really, ports are kind of out of left field. They, they, when you, when you see a tractor or trailer going down the going down the road with a with a couple of containers on it, or one container at least, you know you got to figure that wherever you are in the United States of America. 95% or 90% of that freight in that container came through a port. But there's no money in federal government, formula money for ports. But there will be sometime. And I'm going to help drive it. But, but it, it's, it, it's got to be considered because, and I think Congress woke up the fact there is a port when 9-11 came along. And, and through... A lot of things in the past, uh, they've been against giving ports money for infrastructure, but it's important. It, all ports do the same thing. Just some ports have more tonnage, they have a lot more revenue, they can bond themselves, and they can do their expansion programs. And the small ports can't do that. They don't have the revenue to be able to do it on their own. So we, so we do require federal help. And, uh, and, and, and I've been successful up to this point, and I have no reason to believe that I won't continue to be successful to raise the funds to complete the project. We're always working a year, a year and a half in front for the money so we can plan on the next year or the next two years. So if we're in that position, uh, we'll be okay. We're going to finish the project. 